What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yu watching a Raging Rona review. I got a top 10 video for you guys. I haven't made a top 10 video for a very long time, and it's mainly because I've been doing a lot of movie reviews and movie news update videos. Well, it's time for a top 10 video, and the top 10 video that I'm going to be doing for you guys is my top 10 Michael Bay films. And you're probably thinking, wait a minute, Alex, didn't you already do a top 10 Michael Bay films video last year? Yes, you're absolutely correct. I did do one back in 2013 but now it's 2014 and I've seen Transformers Age of Extinction four times now and I'm ready to tell you guys where does Transformers Age of Extinction belong in my top 10 Michael Bay films list. Now one thing you got to know is that Michael Bay has a career as a director for 20 years now and during those 20 years he has directed 11 films. Now this is a top 10 films list and because of that one of those 11 films is going to be bumped off this top 10 list and I'm going to tell you what that is in just a moment. First I'd like to do a little bit of a short commentary about Michael Bay. Michael Bay is one of the most controversial and possibly the most hated director working in Hollywood today and it's mainly because the types of films that he makes is not for everybody. Michael Bay when he directs a film he has one goal in mind and that is to entertain 100%. He makes films that are like a ride. He makes films that are very exciting and he makes films that are, like I said, meant to entertain. And we're talking about entertaining the general audience, okay? And one of those things that he does to make his films entertaining is make lots and lots and lots of action. So he's a very visual storyteller. And one of the main reasons why he's such a visual storyteller is because of his uh, his previous career as a director of commercials and music videos. Before he directed feature-length films, he directed commercials and music videos. And with being uh, a director of commercials and music videos, you have to tell a story in a short and limited amount of time. We're talking about a 30 second commercial or a four minute music video. And at the end of the day, you have to tell a story and you have to get your point across in a very short amount of time. This type of storytelling has transferred over to his filmmaking. And because of that, he has a very certain style of filmmaking and not just a visual style, but a certain work ethic. And that is to work fast and also make movies that feel fast. And I'm talking about fast paced because they're full of action. And that's what Michael Bay does. He makes action packed films that are very entertaining. And maybe it's not entertaining for everybody, but for the most part, he's trying to make a movie that is meant to entertain. And that is by having lots and lots of lots of action. Keyword being action. Because with regards to action, the one thing that I have to have a, that I have huge respect for other than his work ethic is the way he directs action and one and the way he directs action is by developing the action sequence first before developing the story and the characters now this is something that is very unconventional most directors would wrap the action se sequence around a story which they've come up with first but Michael Bay on the other hand he works the opposite. I wouldn't say the complete opposite, but a certain degree of the opposite, okay? And you can tell from his action sequences that he spends more time working on action than he does with developing the story and the characters. And it's very evident in a lot of his movies. I wouldn't say all his movies, but most of his films. And with that being said, I have a huge respect for that because he is doing something that is very unique and is very different and a lot of his action is very innovative. Now, with regards to Michael Bay films, we're expected to see a lot of things. Fast cars, hot women, and of course, explosions. And Michael Bay has crafted some of the most complicated action sequences and biggest explosions ever known to mankind. I mean, we're talking about the biggest explosion uh, uh, um, with working actors today, and that is in Revenge of the Fallen in Egypt. Pearl Harbor had one of the most exp spectacular explosions I've ever seen. And even for a small explosion, small, like in Transformers Age of Extinction in that warehouse sequence, that was still spectacular. It didn't have to be giant. Another thing that Michael Bay is known for is his involvement, or rather his great relationship with the military, the U.S. military. And 
Armageddon is the first movie to have the hugest milit U.S. military involvement in history, okay? And then came Pearl Harbor, which made it even a larger involvement. And then Ridley Scott directed Black Hawk Down, which was the largest military involvement in a Hollywood film. And then afterwards, Michael Bay came out on top with Revenge of the Fallen being the biggest military involvement in a Hollywood picture, okay? Uh, I mean, that was absolutely ridiculous. But still, at the end of the day, you got to know that Michael Bay does one thing, or rather does a lot of things in his movies. And that is make his films bigger, louder, and just bigger. <laughs> Anyways, with that being said, let's do my top 10 list for Michael Bay Films 2014 edition, okay? Uh, now, here is my list of Michael Bay Films 2013 edition, and you can take a quick look at that, and what I've done is actually I've moved things around a bit because I've watched Transformers Age of Extinction and I also have to bump off one of those films off this top 10 list and I've actually moved some things around after watching a couple of his films a couple more times and I felt that maybe I like some of his films better or rather more than some of his other films. All right, so let's start off by telling you guys which film I knocked off this top 10 list and that is... Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. I just think Transformers Revenge of the Fallen is his weakest film and it'll always be his weakest film mainly because it has a very, very poor script. And it's all because of the writer's strike. They didn't have a whole lot to work with and you can see how much that hurt the film. Regardless, I watched Transformers Revenge of the Fallen three times in the theater. Okay, so that is number 11 which has been bumped off this top 10 list. Number 10 is Pearl Harbor. And Pearl Harbor is a movie where I felt wasn't uh, Michael Bay's, uh, uh, it shouldn't have been directed by Michael Bay. The funny thing is that Michael Bay is the only director that would have made Pearl Harbor like this, okay, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he basically turned a tragic event into a roller coaster action film spectacle. And I don't think that's something you do with um, tragic events so, uh, <laughs> Pearl Harbor is number 10. Regardless, I've watched this movie in the theater four times. <laughs> and it's mainly because of the, the spectacular action, okay? There is a director's cut, and I don't think in any way the director's cut is better than the, the theatrical cut. Number 9 is Bad Boys 2. And Bad Boys 2 is full-on Michael Bay. That's what I want to call it. I want to call this movie full-on Michael Bay because this film is really where Michael Bay just, he just says, screw the critics. I want to do what I want to do, and I want to make this movie bigger, louder, and badder than the, the, than the first one. And he does do that. It's an action-packed thrill ride. It is a lot of fun. But one thing that we lost in Bad Boys 2 that we loved in the first one is the characters. We lost the, the, the charm and the chemistry of these characters, Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett, and that's really unfortunate, but he replaces it with bigger and louder action, so uh, at least that part's entertaining. I've seen Bad Boys 2 in the theaters two times. Uh, number eight is The Island, and The Island is um, Michael Bay's most thought-provoking film. I think it's his most thought-provoking film because it deals with some very controversial concepts uh, and uh, that is the uh, the concept of or rather the um, the act of cloning and um, what he does is that um, he makes us he actually gives us a very um, thought-provoking science fiction film in the first uh, uh, in the first act okay but the second act it becomes action you know which was cool because you know we've been waiting through like a like a you know a very uh, a, 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 a very story driven first act now it's time for action which was really cool the third act on the other hand falls apart as your typical action movie where it's all about okay let's kill the bad guy and that that that's what kills it for me so um you know what it had potential it really had potential and um no matter what, I still enjoy the film and I've watched The Island three times in the theater. <laughs> uh, number seven is Bad Boys. Now, when Bad Boys was, was um, when I watched Bad Boys rather, I watched it on VHS as a kid and I, I didn't even know Michael Bay directed this film. I just felt that 
this movie's so cool. It just looks so cool. It, it's a movie that, that just felt like, uh, like I felt cool by having seen this film because not only was I a kid and I wasn't allowed to watch an R-rated film, but the movie itself just looked so cool. It felt like a music video and the action was cool and everything about it was cool. <laughs> and um, uh, like I said, I'd never watched this movie in the theater. I watched it on VHS and uh, this movie falls at number seven. Okay, number six is the movie that I have to move up from uh, my 2013 edition list, and that is Pain and Gain. Pain and Gain is his most, truly most controversial film to date, okay, after The Island. Um, you know, the, the concept of cloning is controversial, but Pain and Gain is truly his most controversial film. And I have to say that Pain and Gain is what I'd like to call Michael Bay 100%. Fast cars, women, a little bit of explosion, but more of Michael Bay's Michael Bayisms in it. <laughs> Everything you know about Michael Bay is in this movie. Okay, first of all, it it's shot in Miami. It's also shot inside his house. Okay, <laughs> and 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 second, it's a long movie. Okay, not necessarily saying that it's a bad thing, but it's filled with a lot of Michael Bay moments, which he refuses to take out of his uh, out of his film, which would make the movie shorter. But you know what? I said a lot of things about this movie. You can watch my review about it, but I'll tell you that after watching a couple more times as a film, I think it's actually a pretty good film as a film. But still that doesn't that st still doesn't change how I feel about the movie and that I felt that this is a movie that shouldn't have been made into a comedy, okay? And it shouldn't have been made into uh, 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 w uh in a way where it's supposed to sympathize with the uh with the, uh, uh, um, you know, the bad guys, okay? This is a very, very brave thing to make, brave subject matter or story and film to, to tackle. And I have a huge respect for Michael Bay doing this, for having the courage to, to make this movie. But still, that doesn't change the fact that I felt that this movie should have been told through this perspective of Ed Harris's character. Because at that, you know, with, with, uh, with the story told me through his perspective, it would have felt more like a good guy versus bad guy type of story. And this is something that um, I think the audience would have accepted more. Okay, and but it's not about audience acceptance. It's about telling a story. And it's also about showing people how... How, how you know how how real you know the, these these uh these situations can get okay how crazy they can get and how you know uh, sadistic humans can get you know it, this is almost like a, a a character study on on just just uh people you know uh, not even caring about anything else but themselves all right so anyways uh, i've watched pain and gain uh, once in the theater, but I watched it two times in its home video release. And after the third viewing, I just kind of grew more of a liking to this movie. It's definitely got a a, a larger story to it. It's got a, 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 a larger than life characters, which is definitely a lot better than a lot of uh, some of his other films. Okay, in terms of storytelling and characters. Uh, one thing I got to mention is never take a date to this film. Now, don't take a date to a film like this. Okay, I took a date to a to this movie and uh, I just was like thinking like, oh, what a big mistake this was. <laughs> Anyways, number five. Now we're getting to number five and, and this is where it starts getting better and better. Okay, at least for me. Transformers Dark to the Moon. Okay, I won't say anything more about it. I have a, a very in-depth review about it. I've watched this movie 11 times in the theater. Number four is Armageddon. Now, this is where Bayhem started, okay? Bayhem, okay? And this is where Michael Bay is known for his style of filmmaking and uh, where he was known for the master of explosions. I watched this movie three times in the theater and when I watched this movie, I just had so much fun and I felt that, okay, this is a ride movie. This movie feels like a ride and I was, I was entertained 100%. Number three is Transformers Age of Extinction. You guys wanted to know where Transformers Age of Extinction falls in my top 10 list. Well, now you know. It is number three. And uh, it is a movie that is also a big ride. I've seen this movie four times now with three times being in IMAX 3D, which is the way you should watch it if you have an IMAX theater available to you in your city. And the movie is just so exciting. It's so much fun. And it is the most fun I've ever had in a movie theater 
to date. It is my my most fun movie going experience. And this is the reason why we go to the movie theaters. It's to be entertained and to watch big movies like this. This is a movie that is meant to be seen on a big screen. Like a giant king size screen with big sound. Okay? So that is number three. Number two is The Rock. The Rock has to be, I would say, Michael Bay's masterpiece. Okay? Because... The great thing about it is the characters. I really love the characters. These are the best written characters for a Michael Bay film. Ed Harris puts on a great performance. Sean Connery is a delight to watch. And Nicolas Cage is just a great compliment to the rest of the, the, uh, the, the actors. I mean, the, 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 you know, the, the characters in this film. Okay, so I really loved it. And it is one of those films that you can truly call a non-stop thrill ride. It is just a non-stop action movie and it's a great film. Great story, great characters and you're gonna love it. Okay? And also great writing. I love the dialogue in this film. <laughs> Number one still stands Transformers. The very first film. Uh, oh, by the way, I just gotta tell you that The Rock is the very first film where I finally realized that I was I was watching a Michael Bay film because that's when I realized like hey this movie feels a lot like Bad Boys and then I looked it up and then I realized that oh Michael Bay directed this film this is a director I want to follow whose whose career I really want to follow now okay now back to number one uh, number one is Transformers a movie that I've seen eight times in the theater uh, one time in its IMAX re-release so uh, eight times and it is a movie that I really really love and it's still a movie in my top ten films of all time list. My top 10 favorite films of all time, Transformers. The main reason why I love Transformers is because it is an origin story. There's a very, there's a sense of innocence in this story about kids discovering Transformers, which made me feel like a kid because the best scene in the entire movie is, is the arrival of the Autobots, which is such a magical scene. It is a scene that transforms me into a kid into a, a, a small boy looking at, at, uh, at, at, at uh, this moment so larger than life, which makes me feel a really positive and, and, and just excited feeling deep down inside. And that is the main reason why I love this film, is because of a feeling that I get. It's when I watch this movie, and even when I listen to the score from Steve Jablonski, and I listen to Arrival of, to Earth, while I'm driving, I get goosebumps every single time, and it is just a it is just a great film. And one of the re, one of the things that uh, really differentiates Transformers: Age of Extinction from all the other ones is the, the 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 fact that the Autobots are actually fighting Decepticons, like actual Decepticon characters, as opposed to nameless evil robots. That is something that I'm getting a little bit tired of from Revenge of the Fallen, Age of Extinction, Dark of the Moon. They're fighting nameless, evil robots. On the other hand, in Transformers, we actually know who they're fighting. So um, I think that really lends a compliment to or lends it as a good thing about this film because we know how many bad guys there are. We know who the antagonists are and we know who they're fighting against. Okay, uh, and, and it's really important to identify your antagonists. So, so there you have it. There is my list. This is my 2014 edition list of top 10 uh, Michael Bay films. And uh, we don't know what uh, Michael Bay is going to work on next. But uh, with that being said, even though Transformers, the very first one, is my is the best Michael Bay film in my opinion. Transformers Age of Extinction is my favorite Michael Bay film. It has tons of problems, like in terms of flaws. Uh, it's nowhere near being a perfect film, but it is my favorite film right now because it, it just is so much fun, okay? But for story and characters, definitely the very first Transformers, excuse me, the very first Transformers film. And there you have it. That's all I gotta say in this video. There's my top 10 list. If you have seen all of Michael Bay films, or even five of Michael Bay films, let me know in the comment section below what are your top Michael Bay films and rank them in order, all right? 
Let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation. Also, follow me on Twitter at Rage Nation. My name is Alex Hugh. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Elements from the original film, but one thing that he forgets to do is really make the story profound like the original was. The, the, 